Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 17th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In the diary today by Xavier about the Houdini backdoor. Houdini is an old, old backdoor going back to 2013, but apparently still interesting enough uh, to be used. And the version that Xavier found was delivered via a JavaScript dropper. This JavaScript dropper was obfuscated in interesting ways, which Xavier walks you through how to decode particular obfuscation. In particular, most of the code was actually not used and really just inserted to confuse analysis of the particular script. So if you're running into JavaScript like this, you may find Xavier's post useful. He also posts the IP address of the command and control server being used here. Now, one type of vulnerability I try to focus on here in these podcasts is always uh, when we're dealing with vulnerabilities in perimeter secure devices like uh, firewalls and the like. And turns out they are quite often exploited, in particular by more sophisticated adversaries. We have an interesting blog post by Volexity. Volexity uh, took a look at a recent uh, vulnerability in the Sophos firewall. Sophos did publish an advisory on March 25th uh, describing a remote code execution vulnerability. But Volexity states that they have actually seen exploitation as soon as March 8th. So about two weeks before uh, the actual uh, vulnerability was made public uh, by Sophos. Great write up here by Wellexity discussing all the different things that the attacker did and uh, how they may have used this particular vulnerability in order to gain access to the firewall. Once having access to the firewall, they then use that access to play machine in the middle and uh, modify and breach other systems. The Zero Day Initiative provides us uh, with an interesting write-up created by a researcher who found in April a vulnerability in FreeBSD's Wi-Fi stack. It's one of those classic sort of Wi-Fi stack vulnerabilities in that you have beacon frames or other management frames that have a set of variable length parameters. According to standard, those parameters have sort of a maximum size, but the length field may actually advertise a larger size than the standard allows. If developers are now using fixed length buffers in order uh, to hold those parameters, not actually verifying if the parameter is actually uh, complying with the specification, then you end up with a buffer overflow. The write-up explains in detail how this all works and how to take advantage of this vulnerability and actually create a functioning exploit. The reason this is kind of important is like not many people think about running free BSD. It's not something that you have often on endpoints, but again, a lot of security devices are using free BSD. Most notably, PFSense and OpenSense are using uh, this uh, version of BSD, which may be vulnerable if you haven't uh, patched it. Some proximity, of course, is required here in order to expose the vulnerable Wi-Fi stack to uh, the exploit. And well, let's stick with this theme. We got a number of uh, patches from Cisco. The one I want to point out here is a critical patch base CVSS score of 9.8 in Cisco's email security appliance and Cisco's secure email and web manager. This is exploitable if the device uses LDAP for external authentication. An attacker essentially just has to fill in the magic username and password in order to log in according to the advisory. This does not sound like a hidden sort of backdoor password, probably more something like LDAP injection or such, where by entering a specific username and password, you're actually sort of bypassing the authentication logic. And finally, we got a vulnerability in fast JSON. That's a Java library. And what it comes down to here is essentially a deserialization of vulnerability. Fast JSON allows you to parse JSON as the name kind of implies and it 
does so at least as one option by just instantiating the object being described by JSON. Now there is a block list that is defined as part of the library that does not allow certain known dangerous objects from uh, being uh, deserialized here, but there is an quite simple uh, bypass of that list by just extending the throwable class, which, well, uh, is always deserializable here uh, in this uh, library. So interesting little deserialization vulnerability has been patched a while ago, but now JFrog came forward uh, with details regarding the vulnerability, which of course could also lead to exploits uh, being delivered soon. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.